With facial paralysis, we always worry about the facial muscles uh, becoming atrophic to the point that if you do surgery, they don't recover. So it's always good to try to see a specialist as soon as possible. That way we can sort out what the cause of the paralysis is and begin to develop a plan. I've often heard people that have been paralyzed for 10 years, 20 years, and it's too late. It's never too late to be seen. We always have an option for those who just got paralyzed, those who were born with paralysis, and those who have lived with paralysis for a very long time. So the sooner, the better. With the facial paralysis, there is a bunch of different techniques that can be done. Um, the two main states of t surgeries that we offer, one is to repair a nerve. We do select that option when the muscles are fine, the muscles are alive which means you've had paralysis not too long ago, maybe from surgery, from Bell's palsy, from brain surgery, the muscles will respond to a new nerve. So those, in those cases, we always do our best to try to reconnect new nerves to get the muscles to function again. The second category of options are muscle replacement. Muscle replacement is needed when the muscles are too far gone. The cases such as long-standing paralysis, paralysis that have been present for over a year, a year and a half, those who are born like children, born with syndromes that their facial muscles did not develop, or pa patients who had recovery but the recovery was poor. In those cases, we tend to move muscles around. And then there's a third category of patients who have Bell's palsy. Their muscles are fine, their nerves recovered, but the recovery was abnormal. And in those cases, sometimes we just rearrange muscles, rearrange nerves to get the best outcome. But with the nerve procedures, we have what we call nerve transfers. Nerve transfers usually mean we will take a nerve that is working. Examples are the masseter nerve, the hypoglossal nerve, and then we transfer it to the facial nerve, which is non-functional. Sometimes we would recruit a nerve from the opposite normal side of the face. That is called a cross facial nerve graft. The advantage of a cross facial nerve is you are trying to use a facial nerve that already knows how to smile, how to laugh, how to move the face naturally, and you get it to grow across the face to the paralyzed face to help the paralyzed face move better. We sometimes do a combination of nerves, a cross facial nerve graft plus a masseter nerve or a hypoglossal nerve. The decision to, as to which nerve we choose is based on the result that we are trying to achieve. When it comes to muscle transfers, one of the most common muscles we transfer is called the gracilis muscle. The gracilis muscle is a thigh muscle. It's a very long muscle, it's as long as a, as a belt, as, as a belt. But we don't take the whole muscle. We take a small piece of muscle about the size of a finger, and then we tease them out to replace the muscles that naturally cause your face to move that are now non-functioning. Um, we at Hopkins have developed new techniques that look at different types of muscles that we can use to replace uh, eyelid muscles. There are not good options for replacing eyelid muscles, but we are leading in uh, technologies that allow us to do so. What I see as a natural smile is a smile that the lip moves up. You can see the teeth. Sometimes you see the gums. The cheeks mount up. The eye starts to squint. That is a smile that is inviting. When somebody gives out that smile, you want to smile back. That's a natural smile. The only way you can get that type of smile is to replace multiple facial muscles in multiple vectors moving in different directions to really create a broad smile. That's a natural smile versus a muscle that just moves the corner of the mouth, what we call the Mona Lisa smile. So depending on what your smile used to be before you had the paralysis, we try to replicate. So in our minds, a natural smile should make your eyes squint, make the mount, uh, cheeks mount up, move the upper lip, show a full set of teeth. So there are various things that we do to try to ensure symmetry. I mean, facial par paralysis symmetry is the word. Nobody wants to be walking around lopsided. So first thing is that when we are transferring muscles, 
we always look at what the normal side is doing and it try to plan the abnormal side based on that. So we plan the vector of muscle movement based on that. The second thing we do is we are, when we are introducing a new muscle, we don't want the new muscle to be bulky. So we prepare the, uh, the cheek, uh, sometimes we move some fat out of the place, we um, create a dimple, if you, you may say, and put the muscle in so that it fits perfectly with the other side. Sometimes we actually would do a facelift. Um, nobody has ever declined the facelift when we've done this surgery to try to make the face look as youthful as possible. So we do multiple things to try to create symmetry as much as possible. The eyelid area, dysfunction of the eyelid is one thing that we take very seriously. And um, beyond being able to smile or having a droopy face, when your eyelid cannot blink, your eyes will become dry. When the eyes become dry, they become irritated. Sometimes they become ulcers uh, form and you can actually lose your vision. So we put a uh, premium on trying to restore eyelid function. And um, one of the simplest thing we do is to implant and a, a platinum chain, and um, some people use gold, we prefer platinum, we put it in an upper eyelid and we judge the, the platinum position by the movement of an infrared camera. The, our goal is not just to get your eyelid to close, we want to restore blink. And that procedure is done on a routine basis with patients awake and the local, it's the first thing we do. Then we ha have options to try to suspend your bottom eyelid and so that the bottom eyelid will come closer to the upper eyelid and then you can really close your eyes much better. Those procedures are called static procedures. They don't involve nerves or muscles. Whenever we can get the original muscles of your eyelid to function again, we always try to do so. And usually it means that we may connect a nerve from the normal eyelid, uh, eyelid to the abnormal eye, eyelid. So when the normal one blinks, the abnormal one can blink. Well, the Fascia Paralysis Center at Hopkins is world-renowned, it's among the best uh, anywhere. We have been very innovative, we have pushed this field to what it is. We have specialists who have years and decades of experience. We have a multidisciplinary team that includes psychologists, physical therapists, speech pathologists, and surgeons who focus uh, significantly on facial reanimation surgery. So when you come to Hopkins, you can expect to have the best. Thank you.